We are back here in the final segment of our program, The Platform, this evening, and uh, we are speaking with Mr. John Ferguson, who is a former uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police. And um, you're happy that you're not on the force now. Eh? Oh, man. I, I, I miss it a little. You but, miss it? But, you know, after, after, after 40 years and you, you look back, you say, wow, how did you do it? 40 years. Oh, yeah. You, you, you joined the force when you were a little boy. I was a teenager. You were a teenager. Know, it was a... It was a, a, what I would call a marvelous experience, and a, it was like a, a seesaw type thing. But the, 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 the force did a whole lot to shape you into oh, the kind of oh, person that you I, are today. I can never, I can never um, forget you know, the exposure, both locally and internationally, and the discipline that the force did for me. I couldn't get that in a university, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And that's why I will always have the greatest respect for the police force. And, it as an institution in this country and don't mind the negative part that you're saying there there is a, a whole lot that is that that overshadows some of the things that you're seeing now and and, and the force can only go from strength to strength yeah. um mr ferguson talking about the level of discipline that you received on the royal bahamas police force um the boys brigade the yes. boys scouts um, royal ambassadors yes. and all of these uh, community organizations uh, also played a very important role in bringing discipline to young boys yes. in our community yes T today mr ferguson we are an ill disciplined people you in in, in terms of the level of discipline you see when you speak to our youth, when you go into the um, so-called heartland communities of New Providence, the level of indiscipline is palpable. You can feel it. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. Ill-mannered uh, young people, uh, people, young boys who are uh, spewing out yeah. foul language that 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 is a, a that bespeaks the level of ill dis, uh, indiscipline in the society yes yes it does it does and, and and that has happened mr jones because there is a breakdown in the home and don't expect a young man who has no respect for his parents to have respect for you and even taking it a little further, and, and, and this, this what makes it even more dangerous, a young a man who has no respect for godly principles and, and, and godly values, he see, he see a human being like an animal. Trust me when I tell you that. He, he don't see a human being as a human being. He is in a different stratosphere. And that is because he lack the basic fundamentals and tenets of the Christian faith. And that's why that Ten Commandments, let me tell you, that should be hung around the neck of every young person in our country because that is, that is where the, all the laws is intertwined. And, and, and you wonder why I say love is a foreign language? Because if you love people, if you love values, you, 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 you don't destroy what you love. You don't destroy what you love. Mr. Ferguson, you know, you talk about... Uh, respect for family and parents but you know the bottom line is that we have so many of our young men and women who have no self-respect yeah. they don't respect self yes and they have no sense of self True. because a lot of them wondering who they are where they come from, why they're here, well, where they're going. No sense of self. I agree with you. No self-respect. I agree with self-respect. A colleague of mine told me um, this afternoon that he went home in his house around about 11 o'clock this morning, and he met two young men in his house. One was armed, mm -hmm. and, he, and they said to him, old man, go upstairs. 
He said that he gave them the peace sign. Yeah. Peace, my brother. Yeah. And he obeyed their command and he went upstairs. They ravaged his home, took his television set, took jewelry from his wife, cameras and all the rest of it, and left the house. These are young men who entered the home of this man and he went home, opened his door, they saw him and they demanded that he go upstairs, old man. <laughs> now, with that kind of mentality in our country, you see hope? There is hope, but I tell you, the hope can only come through one way. There must be a change of heart. And it's not going to come by no cosmetic surgery. It not, it's not going to come by just a paint brush brushing over saying, no, there has to be a complete transformation of the inner being of these young men. And if you were to go... And, and you speak to some of the young men, perhaps at Fox, at, at, in, in the correctional center now, and you ask them if they want to come back to where they are, they'll tell you no. But you will meet a percentage of them who will say, man, I don't have a problem with this. That's the fellow who needs the Damascus Road experience that Paul had. You couldn't come worse than Paul, you know. Check the book. When he was Saul, you couldn't come wasting him. But he had a Damascus Road experience that struck him down. And when he got up, he heard a voice and he saw a light. And he was led because it blinded him. And a lot of our young men, they're going to reach that point in their life. That's why I tell you there's hope. But they're going to need that Damascus Road experience. And it will happen. You know, um, but Paul was appointed and there was work for Paul to do and Paul was chosen by God for a particular ministry. Right. And Paul did a whole lot uh, in Asia Minor mm -hmm. to spread the gospel and to even seek to teach the Jews and convert the Jews uh, to Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we are living in a different era, a different time. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Ferguson, where it seems as though the society has become more secular. Yes. And has drifted from Christianity to secularism. Yeah. Because we are talking about Sunday schools that used to be held in just about every church in the country and they were filled with young children. They are hardly held at all today. You have churches that are not having evening worship services on the Lord's Day. <laughs> I ain't talking about no midweek service yeah. or a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. I'm talking about on a Sunday night when there is no divine worship service as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about the secularization of a society, a society that the society, not only individuals, but the country apparently is veered away from Christianity. Yeah. But you say there's hope. Yeah, the, I say there is hope because there is a remnant of people who are constantly, 24 hours per day, seven days a week, mm -hmm. petitioning the throne of grace, like the old folks used to say, yes. for, the for the deliverance of our country, despite all that we are going through, the challenges. Mind you, the world really is going through a lot of things. Even America, as you can see what is happening in America, the moral, the moral compass has shifted. Things that we never dreamed. And the moral fabric is, yeah. is, is frayed. Yeah. So 
We in the Bahamas now, we have to hold on. Hold on to the things that we know will deliver us. And we cannot retreat, and we cannot dilute, and we cannot change anything that the book says must be done. But is the number of, of people growing who are of your mindset, or is it diminishing? The number, is it growing? Because, you know, I, 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 I have a, a, a suspicion here that people of your mindset, you, 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 you uh, 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 leaving the scene, well, and, 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 and there is a, 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 a new generation of, of Bahamians that have not been as convicted as you are uh, to do the kind of things that you are doing. That's why we have to leave some monuments and some things in place that is irremovable. You have to leave some things. You see how the, the and, and I use your, you as an example, the standards, the standard and the, and the pace that you have done with journalism and, and this kind of dialogue and thinking, it must be so entrenched that it cannot be removed. And, and, and that's why, that's why the, the Bible is right. And, and you find that those great patriarchs, I mean, look how long ago they were gone, but we're still reading what they did. And 50, 60, 70 years from now, when they ask, well, who was Wendell Jones? It comes out loud and clear. It's glaring. He was one of the, the greatest journalists that this country has ever, has ever seen. And that's the kind of standards we have to set. And the generation coming behind, we have to mold them and fashion them to carry us and propel us on two generations ahead. We must ask the question, where is the Bahamas going to be if the Lord tarries in another 50 years? In another 75 years, where is it going to be? That generation that is not yet born. And if we don't continue to put those values together, and again, getting back to, like you said, the church, the relevancy, well, if we don't watch it, some other influence and some other organization is going to come in, and they're going to show you how to do it. Because you know a lot of countries you go in today around the world, when it comes to their religion and their culture, you don't touch that. You touch everything else, but you don't touch that. That's sacred, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 uh, I mean, look at the look at the look at the Pope, who is, I call him a globe-trotting Pope. He's more an evangelist to me now than anything else. Mm -hmm. he, he 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 gone into prison. He washed the the the, the, the prisoner's feet. He, he feeds. Goes. You know. And, and so things are. You know. The, the Lord is using people for different reasons. To fulfill the purpose for which he has put them here for. So that we give you an opportunity to talk some more about what are we going to expect. Um, uh, this is the uh, flyer. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, the, at the 14th annual Rally in the Alley. Rally in the alley. Um, yeah. Seven outstanding Sunday school slash Sabbath school, Sabbath school teachers, teachers. Uh, who have contributed yeah. to the growth and development of their respective schools will receive the Conquering Lion Award. Award. That's a very prestigious award. Okay. You know, very prestigious because it, tell, it, it is given to persons who have succeeded against the odds, mm -hmm. the struggles of life. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been able to, to part knowledge to so many and they come out like a conquering lion with the boldness of a conquering lion. Yes, yes. You know. And we, we, we started this program by, by um, saying um, it's under the theme, except, except the, the Lord, Lord keeps the city. city. Psalms 127. Can't change that. Yes. You can't rewrite that. Yes. You can't dilute that. Yes. And if you don't like it, tear that page out of your Bible. I was doing <laughs> a, a, a program one day uh, with um, uh, Cynthia Mother Pratt, uh -huh. and she uh, said another uh, one to me that I thought was um, uh, very potent, yeah. and that was, um, if the foundation be destroyed, <laughs> what can the righteous do? There we go. There we go. You see, these, 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 these scriptures are there for a reason yes. and for a purpose. And, yes. and I want to say to all who is listening, come to the, come, come, don't meet me there, beat me there yes. on Sunday 
to our annual. This is the biggest, it's going to be the biggest Sunday school rally um, in the city of Nassau that's e going to happen this weekend. Exactly where is it going to be? Woods Alley off Market Street, 3 o'clock. The Bahama Brass Band will be bringing the crowd from the east. And the Urban Renewal Band will be bringing the crowd from the west. Yes. And they are, we're all going to converge in Woods Alley. And I tell you, once you're not there, before those bands get in, you're going to have to stand up. You know, They'll be coming Congress. from the east, east and, and the west. west. Yes. And, and, and the north and the south. Yes. And, and I could tell you, and we're going to have a great time. I'm Pastor Jay Sims is going to be our guest speaker for that event. And we're going to have people from all over. I mean, you know, everybody, everybody who, you know, who is available is going to be there. And, and I want you to know that to God be the glory. Great things he has done. You know, uh, there's a, an old sound they sing uh, back in Acklands and Crooked Island, coming from the east, coming from the west, <laughs> coming, coming from, from the north. north come. From the south. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know that. I, of course I know that. You know that? We shall see the king. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. When you got good age, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask you if you know that. We shall see the king. Yeah, when he comes. When he comes. Yeah, no, no, that's, 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 that's important. And yeah. we have to do these things. And it's important yes. that we lay some things for the generation behind. Yes. They expect us to do that. Yes. And if we don't do it, we would have failed them. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. It's always good Thank to you be for being on here the today. platform. Uh, congratulations uh, to you. And if you can make it come to the rally, I will, try, I will try to do so. We'll have a special seat for you. Uh, no, you don't <laughs> need to have a special seat. I, I can stand anywhere or sit anywhere. Uh, but I, I will try to make it Thank because you. I, I've heard so much about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for watching and listening to our program today. Good evening, everyone.